Hi, my name is Terry Harrington and I'm the Emergency Services Liaison for St. Clair County RESA. I would like to welcome you to this video on how to use an 800 megahertz radio. In this video, you will learn what all the knobs and buttons are for and what information is shown on the LCD display. This will help you understand how to use this radio in case there's an emergency situation at your school. First, a brief background. All public and private school buildings in St. Clair County were provided 800 megahertz radios through grants from the Department of Homeland Security. These are the same radios that our local first responders, police, fire, EMS, and others use when they respond to a call for help. This allows school officials to communicate directly with first responders in the event of an emergency. Please remember you should always call 911 first in the event of an emergency and not rely on your 800 megahertz radio for initial contact for help. First, I want to discuss your radio's batteries. All of the radios for the public schools came with two batteries and a charger. You should always keep one battery on the charger and the other on the radio. That way you will always have a fully charged battery ready to use. You should never plug your radio with the battery attached into the charger. This reduces the life of the battery. And if possible, allow your batteries to completely discharge or go dead before you place them on the charger. If you turn your radio on in the morning when you arrive at school and turn it off at the end of your workday, the battery life should last about two to two and a half days. Of course, if you leave your radio on overnight, then it will probably be dead by morning and you will need to change to a recharge battery. To change your radio's battery, turn the power off, hold the radio so you see the battery. On both sides of the top of the battery are two clips. Pull down on the clips and pull the back the battery to remove. To put the recharge battery on, place the bottom of the battery in the bottom of the radio and then push the top into place until you hear a click. Turn the radio back on and you should be ready to go. Now let's take a look at your radio and identify what all of the buttons and knobs are for and how to use them. Looking at the top of your radio, there are two knobs, an orange button and the antenna. Always make sure the antenna is attached when using the radio, otherwise you could damage it when transmitting. The knob on the left with the white dot is your power and volume button. Turning it clockwise powers up the radio and makes the speaker volume louder. Turning it counterclockwise until you hear a click turns the radio off. When you first turn the radio on, you will notice the display will show self-test, then the channel the radio is tuned to. This is the normal power-up procedure. If you see nothing on the display when you power up the radio, change the battery and try again. And if you're still having problems, call St. Clair County RESA for assistance. The large knob in the middle is your channel knob. The channels are preset and programmed for your radio. Each district has a designated channel. For example, Memphis, KPAC, and Yale all share channel 5. The East China Public Schools is channel 3. We will share more specifics on the channels later in this video. You can find the channel your radio is on by looking at the LCD display. It should read C74EDU followed by the channel number. For example, if you're trying to reach a school in the East China School District, you need to have your radio on C74EDU3. You'll also notice the letters A, B, and C below the large knob. This is used to turn on the scanning feature of your radio. Keeping your radio on C allows you to scan the channels in the school's talk group. Next to the C on the top of the radio is a small LED light. It shows red when you're transmitting or depressing the push to talk button. We'll have more on the push to talk button a little later. The orange button is a panic button that sends an emergency signal directly to the central dispatch. However, this button has been deactivated on the school radios to avoid unnecessary panic calls to central dispatch. As you look at the display on the front of the radio, there are four buttons on the left side. Let's take a look at those four buttons. The blue button at the top of the left side allows for private talk between radios. This is another feature that is disabled on the school radios. The large button is your push to talk button. You need to push this button and keep it pushed while you're transmitting your message. When you let up on the button, your transmission will stop immediately. When you send out a call on your radio, depress the push to talk button, wait a second or two until you hear a little chirp. 
The chirp means your radio signal is now connected and you can send your message. If you don't hear the chirp or you hear a low bonking sound, it means that you do not have a good signal and you need to move to another spot within your building or point the radio toward a window. Many users do not wait for the chirp and the first few words of their message are missed, so it's important to wait for the chirp. The next button turns on the backlight of the LCD display. This can be helpful if you find yourself trying to use the radio in a dark room or a hallway. The last button is used to show which tower your radio is connecting to. This identification is displayed on the LCD panel. Unless you know the numerical identification of the tower, this feature is not real helpful for most schools. Next, let's take a look at the front of your radio. You will find the LCD display in six buttons. You should not need to use these buttons unless directed by Central Dispatch or your local first responders. On the LCD display, you should see the time in the upper left-hand corner. Below the time is a little antenna icon with bars beside it. This tells you the signal strength of your radio, similar to the number of coverage bars on your cell phone. If you do not see any bars, move to another location in your building to use the radio. The display should read C74EDU followed by your channel number. For example, in Algonac, the display should read C74EDU1. In Port Huron, it should read C74EDU6. We hope this lesson helps you understand your building's 800 megahertz radio a little better. If you still have questions, please contact St. Clair County RESA at or the St. Clair County Homeland Security Emergency Management Office 